Welcome to TYT Sports. Jason, Jeremy, talking some NBA mock draft. So we covered a lot of college basketball. We covered the tournament. Our brackets were meh. Not great. Picked the Final Four, but then it all went downhill from there. Interestingly enough, we're back here to talk about uh, at least the top ten of this draft, because I think this is actually a top-heavy draft with a lot of players who can become great pieces or assets to championship rosters in the future. I don't know if there's any superstars, but we'll discuss that. So first, interesting article from last year, 538, on between freshman, sophomore, junior, and seniors, the best to invest in when drafting. Let's take a look at the 538 chart. Thank you, Nate Silver, as always. So although freshmen and high schoolers have the highest career arc, it takes longer for them to get to that point. And this is by average win shares. You can see sophomores will have an immediate impact almost three years in. This is not all sophomores. And surprisingly enough, international players, I'm, I'm shocked is so low. Because I feel like international players of recent have su had such a, a big presence in the NBA. I feel like we remember the success stories and forget about the, um, the no Darko Milicic's right. and, you know, <laughs> I like Darko. From there. I like Darko Milicic. She, she, at the time, he was not a. I'm sure he's a nice man, but he's not good at basketball. Well, that's true. Oh. He's better than I am at basketball. That's true. All right. So I thought that I thought that was just an interesting little graph from 5:38. And uh, the example I wanted to throw out there is uh, Marcus Smart, who next year might become uh, quite a good to great defensive NBA player. We know that's part of his skill set. Justin Anderson from Virginia has a similar game to his going into the NBA. Uh, and the Celtics are going to be very good. I know Ja'Cory, our director, is probably freaking out in the control room right now in excitement because they might be making some draft day trades. Hey, hey, hey. Marcus Aldridge and Wes Matthews is what I keep hearing. So let's take a look right now at Bleacher Report. Uh, they have their mock draft, their top ten. We're keeping it to the top ten. There's a few names to throw in there as well. Jeremy, I want to see where you stand with this top ten chart, so let's first have a look. Uh, Timberwolves, Carl Anthony Towns as the number one pick. Lakers, I know you want to discuss that. Jaleel, 76ers, D'Angelo Russell. Let's stick to the top three. As a Laker fan and as a basketball objective analyst, would you rather have Jaleel Okafor over Towns or are you praying for some kind of draft day switch? I, it's so hard to predict when we've never seen anybody. I mean, we've seen barely one, one minute of NBA time. One minute of NBA time, yeah. We saw, you know, we saw the, the workout that Towns had that apparently blew... Scouts away. Uh, right. He was anyway, draining threes. He was draining threes and he was crossing people up. Well, he was crossing air up. Anyway, <laughs> but I mean, if you look at just the overall skill set, Towns is the more complete player. He doesn't have the back-to-the-basket game that mm -hmm. um, Jaleel has. has, but his defensive presence was great. He was great at Kentucky. He seems to have potentially a higher upside. He has a mid-range game yeah. and apparently a three-point game that he was showing off during the Lakers tryouts. Um... As a Laker fan, I would love for him to fall to the two somehow. I know there's been speculation that Flip Saunders would somehow royally fuck it up and picture Lil Okafor as a number one because <laughs> he likes his style of play. I don't see that happening. I see the Timberwolves actually drafting Towns. I don't know what's going to go on from there. There could be pick swaps. All sorts of things could go on. But, yeah, I mean, I think Towns would be a better fit for the Lakers, especially because Julius Randle, who we can assume will come back healthy. healthy. He's, he's a 19-year-old guy with a broken leg. I feel like he'll be fine. <laughs> um Okafor's not a defensive center, really. He doesn't play much defense. Either there's Randall, they'd be is. soft. Well, okay. Is that, are you quoting something there? Or no, just... I, don't, I, just, I, just, I think uh, overall, Julio Okafor's defense is a major concern. Oh, it is. It absolutely is. And I think that's why in the short term, or even in the long term, having someone like Towns to bolster your middle is more important to them than maybe the back-to-the-basket presence that Okafor has. That being said, I would be thrilled with either of them. So what's interesting that I find is the Timberwolves become a good team with either of these players. Uh, and it's unfortunate they play in the West, although Reggie Aloysius Miller uh, said something way too bold, uh, bold when it came to this morning's Sports Talk Radio. On the Dan Patrick Show, Reggie says if the Timberwolves were in the East and they drafted Carl Anthony Towns or Julia Okafor, they're a top four team in the East. That is not true. Uh, I just don't see that even happening, especially with a, a healthy Paul George coming back. The Pacers will be good. The Celtics getting better. Obviously, the Cavs, Bulls, and the Hawks still probably playing well in the regular the Bucks. season. Fear the deer. We love the Bucks. Uh, but back to the draft. Yes, Jaleel Okafor, as we've been, they've been saying, back to the basket, best in the draft. Uh, Jaleel Okafor, what concerns me about him, on top of his defensive concerns, is a lot of the times at Duke, he would get the ball way too far out uh, on the wing. That's not going to happen in the NBA, and you're not going to get that much space, and you're not a ball-handling center. That just doesn't translate to the NBA. Carl Anthony Towns is the drool-over prospect, but the one person that I think, A, if he stayed one more year, would have been 
easily the outright number one pick next year, and point guards tend to do very, very well when they get drafted number one overall. And that's D'Angelo Russell, who, as much as I would love him to go to the Knicks at the four, it doesn't make sense. Phil Jackson has a system. He doesn't work in that type of system. Where he does work is in probably the 76ers system, where they have like 35 draft picks. And but four centers. And four centers. Yeah. Uh, Nerlens Noel, Joel Embiid, who looks deadly in his, tr in his workouts recently. Noel looked great back. last year, too. Uh, they're going to be another fun team to watch with young talent. D'Angelo Russell is a special type of player, a special type of point guard. You give him the floor to run, he is going to be making top 10 highlight reels. He's going to be fun to watch. He's going to be everything they wanted Michael Carter-Williams to be, except he might put up the numbers that aren't just stat padded. His numbers might actually make a difference. Uh, again, are we putting too much stock into all these guys? Absolutely. Uh, lastly, I want to go back to that chart yeah. because two other players to mention. I don't get to talk about my Knicks that often. Uh, if they don't trade the pick and I trust what Phil does, I would really like to see Justice Winslow go number four uh, instead of Emmanuel Monday. Not that I have anything against him from China, but in terms, of, like, in terms of that type of point guard, I don't think it's best for that triangle offense that I'm pretty sure Phil is still trying to put in place. Justice Winslow, a Draymond Green-like right. player. He plays with so much heart and got better, he stepped up when it matters, and Phil Jackson likes that. He drafted Clay Anthony early as part of that reason. Big dogs, big fights, he's there to play. Uh, and he proved that as his draft stock rose and rose and rose during his yeah, uh, finals run. Winslow's an interesting prospect because he started around eight, right, eight right. or nine, Go and on. ever ever since ever since that final, uh, was it the finals yeah, game? Yeah, the finals. Yeah, games. ever since we saw and him play. the final play, four. Yeah, and the final four on the biggest stage. Everybody's been talking about Justice Winslow because he has so many of those intangibles that yes. you want. Yes. It was an NBA player on your team. He's a little. He played the three mostly and a little bit of the mm -hmm. four at, at Duke. He's too a, small to play. A little undersized. Yeah, he's six, 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 seven. But I th don't really th see that as a problem moving forward. No. He's someone who I think if you have the fourth pick or the fifth pick, you should do everything in your power to get him on your team. I completely agree with you. I think the Knicks would be very smart in picking him up over Moutier. And that's that's how you pronounce it. Thank you. Uh, in addition to that. Uh, when it comes down to what's going to happen, there's going to be a lot of draft day trade th trades, I'm pretty As sure. Usually. Uh, before we get into the one other player I want to mention, who I think out of Arizona could be filthy, there's your hint, uh, <laughs> I want to go to Grit, awesome YouTube channel, who broke down with Josh Childress uh, how these contracts work. So I want to throw to that. Josh Childress, if you remember, Stanford University, where did he go in 2008, 2010? He played in, for Olympiakos in Greece uh, and then came back to the NBA. So here's a cool video clip from Grit Media regarding Josh Childress and how these contracts work. 21 years old, six pick in the draft. I signed, so basically I signed a four-year, $11 million deal. Um, the first thing, the first mistake, is people say, okay, I got $11 million. You got five over four years. So that million dollar house that you, you know, thought that you had 11 million, you know, that you had 10 million more, that house then becomes more expensive. Um, you know, you, you buy a house or, you know, some guys rent, whatever. Um, most guys buy their mother a house or a car or something. They buy themselves a car. Um, you know, you got a two to four percent agent fee. Um, you got the NBA escrow. So that check gets eaten up. Yeah, I mean, that's a six pick. Now, if you're uh, rookie minimum, that's 350. So, you know, you're looking at maybe 200 grand. All right, good stuff. I love that he still has the afro. That is a staple to him, and if you ever like, I wouldn't even know who he was. Yeah, the only reason I remember his name and remotely what he looks like is that thing. Is that Afro. He really stuck with it. Yeah, no, he yeah. did a good job with it. So it's really interesting stuff when it comes down to how these contracts work. Some of these guys, what I found really interesting about the contracts and the money real quick is like, I see right guard commercials already with Melvin Gordon, NFL uh, person was draft, uh, running back from Wisconsin was drafting the NFL this year. They're already signing sponsorship deals. Before they even step onto the field or court, they get their sponsorships. We just throw money, shut up and take my money. Uh, so, back to the draft, real quick, Stanley Johnson out of Arizona. A few people peg this guy as, and there's always, who's the next Kobe Bryant in the draft? Andrew Wiggins already looks like that from last year, and he how he progressed, and he could be a superstar very soon. Love, love Andrew Wiggins. But, Stanley Johnson is very underrated, and I think out of anybody in this draft, he could be that 10th, 11th, or 12th pick who just emerges 
as one of the best. Kobe was drafted what overall? 13th. 13th overall. And who was the best player in that draft? Don't remember. Kobe Bryant, probably. Oh, I thought you meant the number one overall pick. No, it was... Who? Yes, good answer. Right. So, again, these... Gems fall in the draft just because of where they're drafted and how it works out. Nothing against Carl Anthony Towns, but I think D'Angelo Russell or Stanley Johnson have the better chance of becoming an NBA All-Star. All right, so there you have it. NBA draft around the corner, live from Madison Square Garden. We might be there. I don't know. I was at the Andrew Bogut draft, the Andrew Bynum draft, when he got drafted. Stephen A. Smith sitting right there. Andrew Bynum sitting right here after he gets drafted. Stephen A. Smith says, quote, This has got to be the worst pick in NBA draft history. <laughs> Two feet away. Let us know how you really feel, Stephen A. Leave your comments in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe. Subscribe. Who goes number one overall? I don't know. You tell me. At Jeremy R327, at Jason Rubin91, at TYT Sports.